Hi, my name is Rebecca Reed and I'm the Outreach Manager at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about hummingbirds and then we're going to make something that you can use to attract hummingbirds to your own garden. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with hummingbirds, but just in case you aren't, here are a few things that make them really awesome. Hummingbirds are native to America and they're some of the smallest birds. So most of them are only about three to five inches long. So that's pretty small. If you've seen other birds, you'll notice that they're a lot bigger. There are 338 known species of hummingbirds, but only 18 of those are commonly found in the United States. And of those, only nine are commonly found in Texas. You'll notice a lot of hummingbirds when they're migrating here from their winter grounds in South America. Hummingbirds get their name because of their wings. Their wings make a humming sound when they fly. Their wings beat at a range of anywhere from 12 to 80 times per second, and they're able to hover unlike most other birds. Some people will compare their flight to that of a helicopter. You're also able, they're also able to move really fast. So some have been clocked for up to 34 miles per hour. And to give you a little perspective on how fast that is, the fastest human ever to run was about 27.5 miles per hour. So the hummingbirds are a lot faster. The metabolism of a hummingbird also is really interesting. So in order to move that fast, they have they have a, need a lot of food and they have a really high metabolism. And they're, it can, they can slow that metabolism at night when they don't have food and when food's not re readily available. And so they enter a hibernatory deep sleep state called turper. And this prevents their energy reserves from getting too depleted. And that way it's not falling to like a critical level where they're in danger. And during that nighttime, their body temperature will also fall. It'll go from 40 to 18 degrees Celsius and their heart rate will fall too. And it'll go from over a thousand beats per minute to only 50 to 180 per minute. And the last thing I want to talk about is how hummingbirds eat. And this is actually some of their, some really cool information about them. They eat half their weight in food every day. And so while well, most of us realize that hummingbirds eat nectar from flowers, they also eat bugs. A lot of people don't realize that. The protein helps them build muscle mass and they'll return um, to the same flowers year after year as they eat. So they have the ability to remember how long it takes each flower to refill with nectar and they'll remember every flower that they feed at. So that's some really good memory. Now we're gonna make something to help you attract hummingbirds to your yard. Now we're ready to make our hummingbird feeder. So for this project, you're gonna need a canning jar, and ideally you want one of the smaller ones. Then you're gonna need the ring and the lid that it comes with, a red file folder, a Sharpie, some wire, a hole punch and scissors to make the top, and some wire cutters to help you make the hanger. So the first part we're gonna do is make the hanger today. And so we're going to first make a loop of wire to go around the base of our jar. And so this is the part that's going to hang it up. So you just want to cut a piece. And it'll depend on how thick your wire is if you want to go around more than one time, if you want to go around just once. Now what's cool about mason jars is they're a little tapered so that you can take it off. You can twist that right on and then you can put it right back on your jar. You don't have to worry about trying to wrestle around with the jar while you're doing this too. So put that on. Twist mine up so we're having these ends, and then you can see you can put that ring right on your jar. Then you're going to make the hanging part. And now, depending on how you're going to hang your your feeder, you may need a longer or shorter um, hanger. I'm going to use make mine about like that, so give myself a little extra so that I can have some wire to twist around at the end. And so what you're going to, want to do? Once again, I'm going to take it off. You're going to want to get it on there, and you want to have it on opposite sides. So if your wire ring was a clock, you'd want to make sure that you put your wire hanger on at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. You want to get it there kind of tight so that it doesn't, see how it can slide around? You want to stop it from sliding around. And so this little wire bit is really helpful for that. And then I'm going to put my 6 o'clock side on. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of thread it through those wires so that way it doesn't slide around on the jar. And that way the jar won't tip over. That. So now we're going to put our jar back in and you can see right there we have a hanger right there for our feeder. There we go. Fine tuning there. You can get it so it's there we go. So then we need to make, we'll set that aside, then we need to make the top. Now for the top, 
we're going to use a red vinyl plastic folder in this case. If you don't have a red vinyl folder, you can use a red plate or, or plastic plate or a red plastic cup or anything else that's red plastic. The reason we use red is because um, while hummingbirds are attracted to all different kinds of bright colors, red is one of their favorites and once, that's why you'll see lots of commercial feeders are, are made out of red plastic. So we're going to take our lid and we're going to trace it on the red folder. Um, in this project, we don't actually need the lid for the final project. We just use the lid as a template while we're making it. So we'll do that. You just can set that aside. You're not going to need that at all. You can save it for when you make jam or pickles or something with your other jars. So then you're going to cut this out. I'm going to cut it out just a little bit here to get all the extra bulk out of the way. So you can see what I'm doing. So you're going to cut it right on that line. And you don't have to be super precise. It needs to fit in that the metal ring, though, for the, the jar. So you want to make sure that you're precise enough that it works there. Obviously, though, if you have a, a folder, you've got a lot of extra in case you mess up. So once you've got your, your ring, then what you're going to do is you're going to punch a few holes in it. I'm going to do about five or six. And so this is going to be the replacement to the actual canning jar instead of using the lid that came with it, we're going to use this. So you can see, I punched my holes, and then you'll just put that right inside that frame, right there. And then you just twist, got line up the threads, twist the lid on, and you can see right there is a hummingbird feeder. So you'll fill this up with the humming, um, hummingbird nectar. You can get commercially prepared hummingbird food, or if you want, you can make your own with sugar and water. Once your feeder's full, it's ready to hang up outside. Pick a place that's out of direct sunlight and near somewhere that the birds can find shelter. If you already have hummingbirds in your garden, feel free to put it where you normally see them feeding off your flowers. Also, make sure it's somewhere where you can see and enjoy the fun hummingbirds. I hope you enjoyed learning about the hummingbird and if you have, and you have the opportunity to watch them in your own garden. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or topics you want us to cover, please email us at questions at fwmsh.org. Thanks and see you next time.